to join you. That'd be awesome. And uh, Ryan is someone whose sifting is something very real. He's a church planner, he's a pastor, he's a community organizer. He leads something in Vancouver, Washington called the Grassroots Conspiracy. And I uh, was giving him a little love here. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit of Ryan's story. And uh, I guess it was, it was about last May, uh, right around your 29th birthday. And you noticed that you started limping in your right leg. And that's when you discovered, now you went to the doctor and they told you that it actually uh, was cancer in your spine, uh, stage four. Yeah. Terminal cancer in my spinal cord, kind of separating it. The cord itself into two. And Ryan, if you got a chance to read on our website our stories of Sifted, Ryan uh, wrote a tremendous piece on there. And um, we talked about this in our backstage, and I asked him permission, because I thought this, what he wrote here, uh, both is very well written, but also personally just very inspiring. He wrote these words, he said, fighting cancer has not stopped our church planting, it has transformed it. This is not an eruption of the story, it is the story. So whether the gospel story is revealed in my neighborhood through my death or through my miraculous recovery, what we're learning is that God's grace is extended through his ability to redeem every moment, every sickness, every interruption, and listen to this, and to make it a mirror of love to the world. So the question is this, will we allow God to enter into our story and thus transform our sifting into something beautiful? We got an email and... Um, Actually, those news was from your father, inquiring about some things, and uh, uh, the news that, that Ryan has is that from the doctors, and your doctor's a believer, but it's saying that Ryan has three to six months barring a miracle. And I asked Ryan for permission, he said, yes, yeah, we'll, we'll take the miracle, so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had a chance to talk on the phone and everything, and I said, we would love to have you, because I mean, you're going through what we're talking about in, in, a, in a serious, serious manner. And we'd love to have you just kind of right at the beginning of the just kind of address our exponential crowd and kind of give them a challenge, give them a word of encouragement on this theme of Sifted. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. There's absolutely no doubt that church planning is about the worst thing you can jump into. <laughs> and if we took a poll, we all agree that it is just the, it's just a terrible idea. It's hard and ugly. <laughs> and to do that, Finding cancer is an even more foolish idea. Um, two years ago here at Exponential, um, my wife and I made a new friend and he uh, sat down with us and ended up becoming a, our coach and a mentor. And he told us that the only reason we should go into church planning, the only reason specifically we should go into church planning um, kind of from the missional incarnation kind of model is if we couldn't help it. That regardless of whether we had funding, regardless of whether we had support, if this is something that was going to happen through us, that people are going to be coming to Jesus and a church would emerge, then we should move forward. Now, if we needed funding to do it, then he said, maybe you're not going to be up for this task. So essentially what happened is, when we were diagnosed, I say we because everything's just been together. Um, when I was diagnosed with cancer, um, we thought about trying, you know, should we really move forward? Should we continue this, this church planning movement here in downtown Vancouver? And, and the question was simple, there was no answer. It was, it was, of course, yes, because we have no choice. It's who we are, it's what we're about, it's what we do. And to avoid it was, was impossible because it's what God had called us to do. Because <coughs> um, the reality is that, is that when we chose to follow Jesus, when we chose to make this commitment to follow Him, um, it was a commitment to, to uh, the story that He wanted to tell through us. And the cancer revealed that it's a story whether it's through our life or through our death. To be able to talk without fucking tearing up here. Um, because God desires to tell a story through each and every one of us. God desires to tell a story through each and every one of each, each of our siftings. And my expectation is that very few of you, if any of you, are going to have a sifting story that's going to take you to death. And my expectation, my hope, is that neither will mine. But the reality is, regardless of our life or death, God desires to tell a beautiful, beautiful story. One of hope, one of life, one of peace. One of transformation. And what we're finding in downtown Vancouver in our neighborhood is that God's doing just that. 
that, that the stories that are emerging, the people that are, that are coming to us and hearing, uh, coming to us and asking us about the gospel, it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't because of my sickness and because of my story. And so the stories that are emerging are happening because, because we've, we've been willing, because we haven't been so willing, we didn't have a choice. Because, because God's telling us a story, because we allowed him to enter into our story of sifting and to transform it into something where people are seeing kingdom, experiencing good news, and being transformed. And, uh, so I guess my invitation to you um, is, to, uh, is to hope, is to believe that, that God is inviting you into something beautiful, that your sifting is not something to be avoided, it's not something to fight against, but rather something to open up to, and to open, to open up your story to God coming in and doing something amazing, doing something beautiful. Because we're all dying. I know that's cliche, but I can say it because I, you know, I have three, six months, right? We're all dying. And the question is, what narrative is going to be told in your death? Uh, because we as believers believe that death is not the end. We have victory over death. And man, that opens you up to a really, really powerful story. Jesus' name that we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.